In this tutorial for Maya 2023 and later, you will learn how to use the sweep mesh tool to generate a rope and we will cover some generally useful aspects of that tool that you can apply to your projects. This is an updated version of a video that I already have, which is how to create a tube from a curve. So this is a more modern and better approach. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do when we open Maya is to select the curves tab and let's create a curve with the EP curve tool. And now that we have it lying flat on the surface, which is fine, let's go to, let's select the curve and then go to create and sweep mesh. Once we click it, you will see that we have a, a generic tube generated, which is great. And on the right side in the attribute editor, you will see a lot of options for that uh, tube. You can also find it by clicking on the curve and then on the right side, you will see the sweep mesh creator tab. So there are various options, like you can select the amount of sides you want your tube to have, let's leave it at like 10. Uh, you can put a cap on, on, one, on both sides, but that's not that important. In the transformation, you can do the basic transformations, scale, rotate, twist, taper. Let's turn on the wireframe view so you can see what's going on. Most of these sliders are limited by default to like minus two, all the way to two, which is which might not be enough for you. So you can type in whatever value you want, like 10 or I guess, in case you need a bigger number in this uh, slider. There's more options here that you probably don't need to worry about right now. The important thing that you need to know here is the various profiles that you can make, like the rectangle, line, arc, wave, and custom. But we will now worry only about the polygon. And later on, we will discuss a bit about the line. Very important two drop downs here are distribution and alignment. Both are turned off by default. If you turn on align, you can now align your mesh to the curve how you want it. So horizontally, you can put it to the left or right or center, also vertically. So if that's something you need, uh, you might, this is very useful, especially for something like a line, if you want it to go along a curve on, on one side. But let's go back to poly and turn off a line. To generate a rope, we need to select the distribute checkbox, and then there's various types of distribution. We need radial, but so you know, you can do a square distribution and it looks weird now because it's an uh, odd number. But if you were to put four, you would see that it distributes them along the vertices of, a, of an imaginary square. Let's put eight, you will see that you get the logic. So let's go back to four to generate our rope and go back to radial, scale instances, which means it will scale each of these newly generated tubes and let's scale them to so they roughly touch each other we can increase the size if we want let's let's put it at 12 and now we want to leave the rotate and coverage we can leave the rotate as it is uh, coverage basically means if it's gonna populate the whole circle since we selected radial we want it at one and then we can go to transformation and let's do twist. You can see in the distance there, it does a, a twist in a rope like fashion that we need. But since we are limited to two, uh, let's increase it to let's say 15. And there we have it. It's a rope, a very simple way to generate a rope and general tube tubing and stuff. Let's turn off the wireframe so you can see how it looks. It's it's great. It's a very good and useful tool you will use it a lot. So it's also non-destructive, which means you can edit any of these at any point until you delete the history of the mesh. Also, you can now select the curve and control vertex and then position the rope however you want. It's still non-destructive. You can uh, manipulate it however you want and 
get the desired shape of your rope curve. We need more twist here, I guess. Let's do 20. Yeah, great. It also generates some rudimentary UVs, which you might find helpful. Now, if we select this check mark, we can see that it's distributed evenly vertically here. It doesn't make very good use of the UV space, but uh, it's better than nothing. You have a starting point, so that's also great. So yeah, that's basically one great way to use the sweep mesh. Now let's do it on a live surface, as in let's pretend this is this is a head and we'll make it a live surface. And now we can draw a curve along its surface. So you now have a curve on a, on a sphere. And again, we select the curve, go to create, sweep mesh. And now we can make a line, scale it to like 10 or five, rotate it a bit. And now it follows the shape of the sphere. Let's move the curve so it, so we can see it. But we need to disable the live surface first. And there you go. It's very useful for stuff like straps or hair cards and stuff like that. And if you want to save the mesh, you just select the mesh and go to edit, delete history, and you have a you have a custom mesh that was generated on a curve and you can delete the curve now. So that's it. I hope you found it helpful and that you will be able to use it in your future projects. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and follow for more content. Thank you very much.